Hey guys, welcome back. If you haven't watched part one, please go ahead and do so. And in that, I'm just going to summarize um, that Coming Home to Self by Nancy Newton Verrier is the sequel to The Primal Wound. So if you haven't listened to that set of recordings, you can go ahead and check the playlist where it says The Primal Wound by Nancy Newton Verrier and go ahead and listen to those recordings again. This is a reading and commentary by an adoptee, so I will be reading and stopping and talking about some stuff, so apologies. I do highly suggest you get the book. I will be reading um, this book for a while, so if you want to go ahead and zoom up, I suggest you getting the book because there is a lot here. It's broken down into many pieces, which means there's going to be a lot of conversation. With that being said, chapter one starts with the separation trauma. So that is where we are. Although more and more attention is being paid to the effects of trauma on the human psyche, separation between mother and child is rarely recognized as a trauma. Okay, pausing there. <laughs> um, we do talk about it when it comes to the death of... Um, when it's the death of a child or when it comes to like separation, divorce, um, you know, bad things happening. We don't recognize it when it comes to adoption. So that is just one thing that it's, you would think that if we can understand that if a child lost their mother through, you know, death, I hate to say that, you recognize that there's going to be grief. But what we don't recognize is that when it is an adoptee, that just because they're adopted, even at, like, say, day one, that there is a, an adoptive mother, that means that they can immediately bond. Remember, the first three months of a baby's life is determined as, or it's, it's known as the fourth trimester. All that baby knows is the smell and the heartbeat and the voice of that birth mother okay so we have to recognize that anyway moving on authors have written about grape incest battering the holocaust natural disasters and war but a, not about perhaps the most devastating trauma of all being separated from one's mother in the at the beginning of life yet when out when else in life, sorry, yet when else in life is one so helpless and in need of the one person to whom one feels connected, the one who is still part of the self. The fact that the mothers of these babies were discouraged from seeing, touching, or being available to their infants meant that no one paid attention to the babies crying and going into shock. So this still happens to this day. Um, there's many stories where birth mothers talk about the day that the adoptive parents were in the room, they were putting pressure, they didn't get to hold their babies, or they were afraid to because they were afraid to connect with that baby. Um, it's so heartbreaking to listen to. Um, but we really should be listening to more birth mother stories as well. Um, obviously, this is an adoptee page, but I'm, I'm trying to spread some information here, so bear that in mind. Fortunately, there are, many, there are now means to measure some of the physical responses to this trauma, such as monitoring blood pressure, heart rate, and neurological changes. A drop in the serotonin level and elevations in adrenaline and cortisol levels have been noted in many trauma victims. According to James Prescott, one of the brain neurochemical transmitter substances, serotonin, has been shown to be significantly reduced under conditions of failed mother-infant bonding. Now, he did write that in 1977, just letting so you know. This reduced serotonin levels influences conditioned avoidance, sleep regulation, and impulse control, which was noted by Van... Der Kolk, McFarlane, and what I'm gonna say this wrong, Wissis, 1996. Um, 
So again, this was recognized in the later half of the 1990s. All perhaps, sorry, all problems which are often mentioned by adoptees. Brain imaging can also bring insight into the ways in which dentries and axons connect to form synopsis in the developing brain and how it is affected by the environment and by emotional trauma. So basically, they're saying that trauma has been recognized to have these issues, right? Based off all these other things. But, and as we've discussed in other videos, that adoption trauma is rarely recognized and that is a huge problem. Anyway, that is the end of the beginning of chapter one. The next video will talk about the manifestations of trauma. So tune in for that. You should be able to see the uh, the premiere of it. Um, so you know when it's going to be uploaded. I will see you guys then.